Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. In this video, I will be discussing the various types of blood transfusion reactions that can occur when transfusing blood to a patient. This is one of my many videos and shorts about blood transfusions, blood compatibility, and signs and symptoms of reactions. Let's start with a simple allergic transfusion reaction. This is a hypersensitivity to the protein in the donor's blood. Remember, the Rh factor is a protein. Next, the anaphylactic or allergic transfusion reaction. This is a type one hypersensitivity reaction. This can have symptoms of puritis, urticaria, angioedema, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, leading to respiratory arrest and hypotension, leading to anaphylactic shock. Septic or bacterial contamination transfusion reaction. This occurs from donor blood that is or becomes contaminated from bacteria or waste products in the donor blood. The delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is a delayed hemolytic reaction which can occur days to weeks after receiving a transfusion. A patient can be asymptomatic or have a mild fever, anemia, and jaundice resulting from hyperbilirubinemia. This can also occur after an antigen gets reintroduced into your blood. Febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction, or FNHTR. This is a febrile or fever reaction. It may include chills, severe rigors or shaking, and mild dyspnea. This usually occurs due to a systemic response resulting from the development of cytokines, which are small proteins that signal the immune system, from blood processing and storage of donor blood. A transfusion can be continued at the discretion of the provider, along with fever-reducing medications and close monitoring. An acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and occurs due to blood type or ABO incompatibility. The recipient's immune system, or antibodies, attack the donor's blood cells. This leads to destruction of the red blood cells. As a result, bilirubin is released into the circulation, causing hyperbilirubinemia, leading to jaundice. Flank or back pain can occur as the kidneys are affected, leading to hemoglobinuria, which is red-colored urine, as well as signs of disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC. Transfusion-Associated Acute Lung Injury, or TRALI. TRALI is a rare blood transfusion reaction, but one of the most severe. In TRALI, the transfused product activates the recipient's neutrophils, causing acute lung damage, specifically non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. This will cause sudden and severe respiratory failure during or shortly up to after six hours after a transfusion. This results in fever, dyspnea, tachypnea, hypoxia, cyanosis, and hypotension. Supportive treatment is oxygen and IV fluids. Transfusion-associated circulatory overload, or TACO. TACO occurs in approximately 1% of transfusions and is due to fluid overload from the administration of blood products. Respiratory distress symptoms such as hypoxia, dyspnea, and tachypnea can occur in addition to hypertension from the additional fluid volume. TACO can occur within 6 to 12 hours depending on the patient's medical history. Caution in patients with renal failure and CHF treatments include oxygen supplementation and diuretics. So those are the different types of reactions. What do you do if you suspect a transfusion reaction? First, stop the transfusion immediately and activate emergency procedures if required. Stay with the patient and continue to monitor the patient's vital signs. Change the blood tubing or change it to a normal saline line, but do not discard the blood tubing. Maintain intravenous access, do not flush the existing line that has the blood in it, and use a new IV line if necessary. Notify the medical provider. Prepare to administer emergency medications. Prepare to obtain urine samples for laboratory studies. Collect and return remaining blood blood tubing, and all blood-associated documents to the lab. Document time of the occurrence, the patient's signs and symptoms, the interventions, notification of the provider, treatments if any, and the patient's status. And then follow your hospital policy. So if you learned a little something and found value in this video, please be sure to give this video a like. And if you are interested in health information and nursing-related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel. And also hit the notification bell so you can be aware of when I make new videos. Please be sure to check out my other nursing topic related videos as well as my nursing and health related educational music lyric videos here on YouTube. If you don't know, I write and create nursing and health related music. And if you want to take my nursing and educational music on the go, my nursing songs are available for listening on almost all music streaming platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Pandora, etc. as well as here on YouTube. Be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I'll leave links in the description. So until the next video, go save lives and make a difference in someone's life. God bless and goodbye.